Before we get into public input, there's a couple of things I'd like to say. I've been asked by the board to take more control over the board meetings. Uh, remind you that these are business meetings. We're here to conduct the business of the town, not to take shots from the town. We consider your input to be very important. We listen to what you have to say and we take it into account as we work. However, we do not consider the making of public comments regarding specific individuals here on the board or elsewhere, employees or otherwise, appropriate for these proceedings. There's another time and place to do that. When called, would you please come to the microphone? Some of our members are having trouble hearing things that are being said from the back of the room. Share your view on any agenda item or any other business before the town. And again, I remind you that I'm asking you to hold your comments to three minutes. So that being said, Brian, are, is there anybody who wishes to speak? Um, I just have two quick comments. As you said, um, we would like you to also speak up. Um, every meeting before and after the meeting, there's discussion that many of us can't hear you. It's also been discussed on the social media in the past, and it's, I know that it's been requested in the past, so we're asking that you speak up as, as well so that we can all hear you. Um, I'd like to know uh, what decision is being made, when will it be made about a fence around the entire Nash Road landfill with signage. And I, I don't mean just the Love Canal part, I mean the entire landfill. You have ATVers going through there every single day. Mm -hmm. The sign, the little barrier that they had was down for three weeks in December. I called the DEC to get that taken care of. Um, so even though it's been requested of everyone in the newspapers by you to not go back there, they are going back there. And from what I heard from Sarah the last time she was here, she lives right behind there, and she says the cap on the Love Canal part has already been torn up and has been. So do we have any information on? We just this week received notice from the DEC that they are starting the proceedings. They're looking for the, I think they use the term financial partners. Uh, that fence alone is probably $100,000, maybe $150,000. Uh, we don't believe that that should all be on the back of Wheatfield voters, Wheatfield taxpayers. If it gets capped, if they call for a cap or if they call for remediation, it could be into the many millions of dollars. So it's actually DEC's project. It's under the Superfund. They control it. Uh, the request for fence goes way back to 1981. It was again asked for in 85 and again in 89. It's never been required of the town. Uh, at this point, it's been this way since 1968. Uh, it's hardly changed since 68, except that the trees have gotten very tall. <laughs> the trees are huge. Uh, we do have the road. We left the road in place so that we can get in there to do work in that area. Uh, but that will be run by the DEC. Uh, over the, in the next few years. I don't know how long it'll take. We just simply don't know. We have not had our first meeting of partners yet. Okay. Thank you. Hi, right, Mike. At the forum that night, we had posted some questions of National Fuel, and they said that they were going to get answers for those questions and bring them to the board so they could be made public. Has anything been heard on that as of yet? I haven't heard anything since uh, last Wednesday, Wednesday night, right? I've not heard anything from National Field since Wednesday night. Can we put out a, a maybe a reach out to them and ask them, you know, for those you, answers so we could share them? If you remember what the questions were, I remember a couple of them. I don't remember exactly. Yeah, exactly. But they, they, were, they had somebody writing them down so that they could address them. I'll, I'll send an email off uh, tomorrow morning. Thank you. Julie? Good evening. Um, first question, I know, Matt, you already told me that you um, did do the FOIL that I requested last time. Um, could you just tell me the date they received it, just so we can count how long they have? Um, I have the file in my office. I didn't bring it. Um, I got the notice um, early last week. Um, I probably sent it uh, the week before. 
I can get that to you. I okay, don't just email me. Just so because we've noticed our history with foiling them is on the date that they owe it, we need to give them a gentle reminder. Otherwise, it kind of goes in the wayside. Absolutely. I'll, I'll be glad to uh, to let you know the uh, the received date on it. All right. Thank you. So my next question is um, regarding our law that we have on the books. Um, I reread several times the letter that you wrote to um, Nate asking, confirming, or to Quasar, I should say, confirming um, that they spread Class A. And I reread his response several times. And at the end of the day, they did change their process. A process is a certain way that you do something to produce a specific product. And they went from Class A to Class B. They can blame the laws all they want. There were still fields that were permitted with Class B. They could have made Class B and spread it, even in Erie County, or spread it someplace else. But if I'm, a, you know, if I set up shop and I'm going to make, you know, green widgets, and then all of a sudden I make blue widgets, and I say, oh, the paint got old, so they turn green. I'm making a different product. They're making a different product. So for whatever the reason is. Also, if you go back through all the information they presented when they came to town, they did say at one point in the documentation that if they didn't have a place to spread it, they would truck it back to Ohio. So therefore, they really didn't need to start producing Class B. So my question is, are we going to enforce this law and cite them for changing their process or producing a different product? It's a difficult law to enforce. We have the evidence, though. But that, I think the advice that I was given is that that is not a change in process. It's just a change in the material in the process. The process remained the same. The process... To go to Class A. The process what is... What we don't have is an answer from DEC saying you don't, what they do. You, the process is length of time. They're saying length of time. The original process was 30 days, and that was for Class B. There was no reason that they had to, at 30 days, they could have put that stuff in a truck and taken it away. So they're trying to say that it's our fault they changed their process. They basically, if you read between the lines, imply that they changed the process. It's a longer cook time or sit time, whatever we want to call it. This I think that there are grounds here for us to enforce our law. They've walked all over us from day our one. Our legal counsel has suggested that there isn't. Suggested that we shouldn't or there isn't? Well, there, 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 are, there are two points. First off, um, the issue of the time, and is that a change in process? We've talked to our consultants, and that's, that's a really fine hair to split. Um, they, Can you speak up? I'm sorry. The, the change in time of the process, because they say, and not necessarily because anything that wheat feels done, but they are having everywhere a little bit more difficulty unloading the product. So it's been sitting longer. They don't do anything different other than hang on to it longer, and then by virtue of testing, they're indicating that the test says now it's turned into Class A because it's sat and some of the other pathogens have cooked out of it. But all they're doing is hanging on to it, and that's, that's the crux of it. So it's very difficult because any burden of a violation would be on the town to prove it. I mean, it's our burden of proof. So that's a very difficult. And we have our experts and our uh, environmental people looking at it, and they're telling it without getting into the litigation aspect of it because exactly. some of the stuff we don't want to reveal. But this is a very fine hair we're trying to split as to it would be one thing if they're putting in more heat, if they're actively changing, but this is sort of a passive remaining in their tank and by virtue of just there longer, the pathogen level goes down. Well, they've changed their story a couple of times, but I just feel like this company is running a rough shot over us, and they have right from the beginning, and I feel that this was grounds that we could, you know, put a line in the sand with them that we've... Okay, we we've do have enough. a responsibility to protect the people we sealed, not only from Equate, but also from financial difficulties, so... Well, we have to look at that as well. I understand that, but okay. if something, if there's a negative impact to another town, we could be have some liability if there's a problem with that product, and we didn't enforce our law. So, okay. thank you. One one thing I, I guess just want to add is that whatever is coming out, 
change in process or not by virtue of our law, which is still we haven't received uh, uh, anything back from Judge Caruso yet. By virtue of that, none of it will be spread here in wheat fields. And right now, that's the most restrictive law in the state, so none of it. And, and of course, again, it's splitting hair, saying, well, it's going across the border to Royalton or anything, but, but our law is the most restrictive. It's not being allowed to be spread here. I get it. It still hurts the county, and it, it hurts the image, I think, of Niagara County in general. But, all right, so the short answer is we don't think that we should enforce it because we don't think that they violated the process. Well, at any time, and, and, and right? it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a matter of litigation. Yeah. We've got to be careful. Well, yeah, it's a matter of litigation, but it's a matter of something that if something changes, even on a minute scale, it might change the analysis. So it, it's, a, it's a situation in flux. Um, if something changes to tip the scales one way, we'll take the appropriate action. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Julie. Yes, Brian. Okay. Um, for the record, all members are present. We have three sets of minutes to go through. <clears throat> the December 21st, 2015 were not approved at the last meeting the January 4th reorganization meeting, and the January 4th regular town board meeting. Uh, so on the minutes, gentlemen, if anybody wants to make a motion on any one or any two or all three of these, this is a good time. I'll make a motion to approve the, I'll make a motion to approve the December, was it 21st? Dece mm -hmm. December 21st, yeah. Minutes. I'll second. Second by Gill. Anything on the question? This is just with the December 21st. Anything on that question? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Those minutes are approved. Uh, now we are dealing with the reorganization meeting and or the town board meeting of January 4th. I'll make a motion to accept both meeting minutes from January 4th, the reorg and the uh, regular town board meeting. Okay. I'll second that motion. Second by Randy. Anything on the question for either one of these meetings? There was a change that came through today on the one item. Uh, Kathy caught that, and that's in the official minutes now. Any, uh, anything else? All in favor of these minutes signify by saying aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Abstain. Okay, 4-0 oh, and 1. Thank you. Okay, we have a large bill pay this time. The vouchers are mostly, are, it looks like they're all 2015 vouchers, number 2650 through 2815. The total dollars are $1,057,997.05. Um, that does include the fire hall payments for three of the fire halls. Uh, does anybody wish to move these in to be paid? So moved. I'll second. Moved by Gill, second by Randy. Anything on the question? Any bills anybody wishes to hold? If not, then all f in favor of making these payments signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That's approved. Uh, we'll move on to departments. Uh, Paul? It's actually going to be a very warm week next week. That's what they're saying. Um, just a reminder of the extra American meeting here in Laretown. Please keep the cars off the road in the middle of the night. It's the same people every time you see. The full sheriff's department and the conference start issuing tickets. We usually give out warnings. We have given out warnings, but we're not going to give out anymore. We're just going to have the cars ticketed. And if they're on a circle and we can't get around, we may have them closed. Um, <coughs> we're going to have a drainage meeting February 1st, Monday, 730, at the Harley Garage. Those of you that are interested, and uh, I do have one question about one of your motions on curbside states for free homes. Right. Just so everybody's aware, you can't plow in there until the roads are accepted. Okay. Anything for Paul? Paul, there was another question of cul-de-sacs. Can you explain how difficult it is to do cul-de-sacs and try and make it perfect for everybody? Nice to live on. If they live down south and there's not no snow, 
they'll probably grade it. But in the winter, they're a mayhem for us. If everybody follows their driveway, driveway into the center of the circle, once you fill the center up, if there's an island in it especially, there's nowhere to go with our snow. And you know, I've heard, well, why don't you go and haul the snow out? I have almost 60 cul de sacs in this town. I don't have the manpower or the equipment to be able to clean out 60 cul de sacs every time we get, you know, put of snow. And we go around with a dump truck with a haul of snow out. It's different. If we had two or three in town, sure, it wouldn't be a big deal at all. Um, the, other, the other thing with cul de sacs, I know we did one, but they don't have their sprinkler systems put in. We have a right of way, usually 33 foot from the center of the road into your yard. They're having a sprinkler system. It's not the homeowners, it's the sprinkler companies, maybe that's the way they design it. They put them right up against the curving and the country curve. Well, that class of pipes don't stop on my metal leg over the top of it. And we've had, we try to fix them if we can, but we're not going to redo somebody's whole sprinkler system because they're putting them on the right way. When you have a sprinkler system to put in, make sure it's been off the road far enough. Because sometimes we do have to push the snow into the yard when it starts getting set. When last year, this year we've been very fortunate so far, but last year we had to go around a lot of circles, push snow into people's yards, just so we can keep our plow trucks going around. And what we have is, and I know we've talked to a certain subdivision on it, works now that three quarters of a mile long, we get to the end where the circle is, and there's cars parked all the way around. My plow guys have to back up three quarters of a mile. We have a long way to go, especially if you've been plowing for four hours already and retired. I mean, I don't want to see them run over anybody. I don't want to see property damage done. That's one of the reasons why I don't, why the cul de sacs don't work out real well. It's a shame that there is as many as there, as there are in town. And I would, like I said, they're nice to live on. They're very private. I understand that. But as far as the maintenance issue, it's really tough. Okay, thanks, Paul. Rich, water sewer? Somebody decided one needs to be rearranged on uh, Mapleton Road down by Julie's house. So uh, Monday night we were down there doing a little swimming and shutting some valves down and helping a uh, tow truck get a car out. But uh, those folks will be getting a bill for that service. We replaced put a brand new hydrant in Tuesday morning and uh, it should be back up and in service here very shortly. Um, up to you guys if you want. I got a 1992 Chevy pickup that I'd like to declare as surplus equipment, put it out on Auctions International, see what we can get for it. Um, if you want to do that tonight, that's fine. If not, if you want to come look at it before you do that. I don't know well, that. this is the one that was replaced with the new vehicle. We just <coughs> got a in and kind of start weeding out the old stock. It's okay. getting rusty and a lot of miles. Okay, for this one vehicle, I'll go ahead and make the motion to declare it to be surplus. I I'll second it. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, it's declared to be surplus. Does somebody want to make a motion to allow it to go up on auction? It's international. We've got another uh, item in here that we're going to vote on to sell on auctions international. Can we, we can. just sandwich them together? Yes, we can. Okay. If we could, I wouldn't mind going back to highway for a minute. And if Paul talked to us uh, a little bit in the clerk's office, he's got three trucks that essentially a couple of them are broke down. You can't even drive them now. And uh, if we're going to be doing this on Auctions International, I would like to, you know, waiting two weeks isn't going to make change my mind that uh, those vehicles, I don't think, are going to magically they get re that. They're not going to get repaired <laughs> in two weeks, are they, Paul? They're the cost factor. So I, I would like to uh, make a motion to declare three vehicles. Do we need to know the makes and models? I can give it to you. Okay. 1978 Freightliner tractor. You got it. For the little boy. 1987 auto car dump truck. And a 1994 Ford Salter. Okay. okay, I'll make a motion that those three vehicles are declared surplus. Do I have a second? Second. I'll Second by Art. <clears throat> Anything on the question? And then when we get ready for the auctions international, we'll have water, sewer, highway, and whatever the third <laughs> item was. Speed Mike's sign. not here this evening. So okay. Can't do that. Okay, so on the three trucks to be declared surplus, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Okay, those are surplus. We can add them to the <coughs> to the order later. The only other thing I got is uh, the folding and stuffing machine. I didn't have much time to give you guys the information on it. Uh, Will two weeks make a difference on that? Yeah, we or three weeks? Off. It's just going to delay the delivery of it, so it's not, a, not an issue if you want to hold off until the eighth. We'll do that. Okay, I, I prefer to. It gives us a chance to look at the contract. That's fine. We, there's also a uh, maintenance fee in there too, so it gives us a chance to look at that. I don't think you pay the maintenance if you lease it, though. I think you lease it, the it's, it's included in the included. I, yeah. I think that maintenance price was only if you were going to buy it. Yeah, it would be good to have Ed take a look at this and decide which way. I'm a little familiar with it. I did talk with the guy who was on today. The town of Tonawanda, the city of Tonawanda, both have units, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. The only thing I would add, uh, maybe for our town attorney, is uh, it's a 63-month lease, which is a little over five years. So once we start leasing this thing, we're we're into it for 63 months. Right. Uh, the only thing I would say is if, you know, we have to change our billing our billing process or something, and say three years down the road, you know, you change your billing process, and now we we don't need the folder stuffer anymore. Maybe we do it all electronically through emails or something, and. But if something changes, we're stuck with this for 63 months. Yeah. So if we have to get a different product, maybe we could work it into the lease where we could upgrade well, yeah, something I haven't else. seen the contract or the lease agreement, so exactly. I, I don't know if there's that's an That's all out. I mentioned. Exactly. That, that's why we need the time. The quote, the earliest the guy could come out was this afternoon, so that's Very good. Thank you. Uh, is anybody else here? Bridget couldn't be here this evening. Mike Rinelli and his entire family has the flu. Uh, Mike Clock, I don't see. Uh, Arlene's not here. So we are at Wendell. Tim. Thank you. Everybody hear me? No? Sorry, I'm a quiet talker. I'll try to speak up tonight. Uh, we have two things on our agenda this evening. The first is our planning board report for the month of January. The first meeting was on January 6th, and the first item on that agenda was a site plan for Finger Foods products. The applicant proposes to construct a 33,320 square foot office warehouse on a parcel in Advantage Industrial Point um, Park that's on Inicon Drive West. The site includes two entrances from Indicon Drive West, one for employees and one for trucks. The facility will include both production and warehouse space. The company currently has 18 employees and hopes to add 11 additional employees over the next three years. A negative declaration under Seeker was issued and the planning board subsequently approved the site plan with noted conditions. This is basically the last of the big three projects that we've had uh, in the planning board through the fall going into the uh, industrial park. Well, Gateway, is G Gateway has been approved? Gateway's been approved okay. and Bridgestone. The second item on our agenda was the site plan for Aldi's of Wheatfield. The applicant proposes to demolish the existing entertainment complex at 3939 Niagara Falls Boulevard. That's what everyone knows as the Adventure Speedway. Uh, and construct a 17,825 square foot Aldi store. <coughs> Excuse me. The project will provide a mix of full-time and part-time jobs for 12 to 15 people. The previously proposed future retail building was removed from the site plan, and the site now has sufficient parking to meet town code. The site plan was also advised to not disturb the existing berm located on the east and southeast side of the site. It was actually lengthened by about 20, 30 feet to provide more screening. Um, the traffic impact study was submitted to the DOT for review. The planning board subsequently declared lead agency status and began a coordinated review under Seeker, and no other action was taken on that item. And that was it for the January 6th meeting. The second meeting in January was on the 20th, and there was only one item on that agenda, and that was a site plan for Jacob's Ladder. I think we talked about this one at our last summary. The applicant proposes to relocate their current business from the Wurlitzer building to the existing structure at 6292 Walmore Road. That's the Motorrad building. The business will utilize approximately 20,000 square feet of the existing 35,000 square foot building for manufacturing their exercise equipment. The project will renovate the office, install sprinkler system, and upgrade the electrical service. 
The applicant was advised of several items and issues to review prior to their next submittal, including review by the Fire Advisory Board and obtaining approval through the Niagara County Planning Board. No action was taken on that project as well. Can I ask a question? Yep. Are, are they going to own that whole 35,000 square foot building or are they only going to own 20,000 square feet? I think they're going to own the whole building and they're thinking of either saving that additional space for them to expand in the future okay. or leasing that space out to another commercial business. Whatever they decide to do would have to come back to the planning board for yet another <laughs> review for that space. It sounds better if they own the whole thing, but maybe only utilizing a portion of it now. But Yeah, kind of hard to put a property line down the middle of a building, too. So, so that's all of our planning board items. Are there any questions? Nope. Okay, the last item that we have on our agenda, uh, you'll see in your packet, we have a proposal in for GIS support services for 2016. Uh, we've have a, had a similar proposal in every every spring, usually in January, February of every year, and that's to provide the ongoing updating and maintenance of the town's GIS site, our web-based mapping application. And uh, the website has a lot of uh, a lot of things on there that the town uses, especially the water sewer department and uh, the building department. There's aerial imagery. We have floodplain mapping on there, uh, and the water sewer department has been mapping over the years hydrant locations and a lot of their infrastructure, uh, hydrant valves, mainline valves, and they've got their maintenance records associated with that GIS data. So as they do their yearly maintenance and works through, they have things that actually give them visual notifications on the screen of what needs work and what is all set. So our proposal includes basically three different tasks. The first task is, is a lump sum fee that basically covers our cost in hosting that website for the town. The, the second item is a is a newer fee. Um, it's a $400 lump sum fee, and that's goes with the cost of the new uh, software application that we have. If you've seen the water sewer department use this before, they've they've had a big uh, Trimble unit for their GPS collection that they do all their work on. And once they've collected data for a month or two or three, they bring that and it's downloaded and brought up onto their website. <clears throat> well, our technology is advanced now that we have smaller units that you can use in line with a smartphone. And as they're out collecting that data on a hydrant, as soon as they hit their collect button, it automatically shows up on the website and it cuts out a lot of work in between and gives them real-time access to their data. The last item is basically ongoing GIS support and training. That includes uploading into the data that we get as built from subdivisions onto our line types on the system and uh, providing training and support for the water sewer department as they do their collection. It's our the same total amount. We've just revised costs in between the tasks. So I, I have a motion for that if, if there are any questions. Yeah, so I have $3,000 for the lump sum. The 7000 now, is that split 400 and 6600 or is it? No, we, we actually previous had the um, app, the, um, the hosting fee was 2600 and okay. the um, remaining time and expense was 7,400. So the 400 is included in that 3,000. So we've tacked so it we into 3,000 and taken the 400 off of what we would have had as a max for time and expense for the support. So the total still comes to the 10,000. Okay, I'll make that motion. I'll second. Oh. Okay, moved by Larry, second by Randy. Anything on the question? Go ahead, Art. Nope. No question. Okay. If nothing on the question, tool, I encourage it. It, it yeah. doesn't have to be used by water, sewer, highway. I mean, our town attorney, any town board. I, I pull the GIS up here at every, every meeting when there's a problem. I get the aerial <coughs> photography. It overlays parcel boundaries. I can click on it and see who owns the parcel. It, it's a real. I can do distances, like when we're looking how far away is the dehydration from the nearest neighborhood. I can click on it, and you showed me how to do that about a month ago, and it works neat. Uh, so it's a real handy tool. Yeah, I use it often. State wetlands, federal wetlands. Anytime anybody has a question about that, yeah, all the GIS all the is is a bunch of layers. You, know, you get your base road maps, and on top of it, you can put your houses, and you can put aerial photography, and if you want zoning maps or where all your fire hydrants are, it's just various layers. And we, I don't know, in the town, we probably have, I don't think we have more than 100. But how many layers do we have in the town? Boy, there's there's probably at least at least 20 maybe closer to 25. We also have, uh, you'll hear us get into this springtime with our our annual stormwater reports that we do every every March and April. 
Uh, the Stormwater Coalition has new grant money that they'll, they're going to come out and, and extend their outfall mapping capabilities in the town. They're going to get different outfall points within our MS4 boundaries. And they'll, they're collecting all that data and basically giving us their shape files when they're done. We can just load it right up and go in and look at an outfall, click on it, it should pull up a picture and the rating, what type it was, when it was last inspected. So that I know has been used by Ron Stevens in the highway department to keep updated on those things as he's been inspecting them. So the great thing is it's, it's unlimited. Whatever you want to make a data set for, you can do and put on there. Whatever your imagination is, come up with it and get the data set for it. Okay, we have a motion and we have a second. Do we have anything further on the question? If not, then all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That is approved, Tim. Thank you. That's all we have for you this evening, unless there's any other questions from the board. Okay, we'll move on to uh, motions, Matt. Okay, uh, the first uh, item on the motion list was the one motion that we just passed, so I'll move on to the second, which is uh, from the supervisor and town attorney. Motion to authorize the town supervisor to sign and enter into an agreement with the Niagara Community Action Program, Inc., at a cost of $5,000 for the purpose of providing housing services to the residents of the town of Wheatfield. So moved. Second. Moved by Gill, second by Art. Anything on the question? Uh, they do support. I did get the report just this week. I do have it available if anybody wants to see it. Basically, NIACAP uses our money, mixes it with money that they can get from grants, and uses it to help individuals in need. Um, they get some money from the state. They get some money from the Oshai Foundation. And if somebody has a real problem with a roof or whatever, uh, they can help with that, and they also help feed people that need assistance. Years past, our $5,000 has, has leveraged maybe an additional 25000 or so in grant money. So our five gets $30,000 worth of benefit to the community for, for people that need. Okay, anything further on the question? If not, then all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That is approved. <clears throat> Next motion from the Sur and Water Department, Superintendent and Town Attorney. Motion resolving to grant the State of New York authority to perform the adjustment, protection, and support for water and sewer infrastructure for the Town of Wheatfield during construction and agreeing to maintain facilities adjusted via the state-led contract regarding reconstructioning and widening of U.S. Route 62 Niagara Falls Boulevard from Cy Road to Bergholz Creek in the Town of Wheatfield, Niagara County, and to further authorize the supervisor to sign said agreement, project identification number 530.30. I have a question. I read that over. It's going to cost us nothing, right, Rich? It will cost us nothing. We're getting our plastic and asbestos water lines, if so, replaced with ductile, and so it's a, it's, it's a no-brainer. I make the motion. I'll second it. Moved by Randy, second by Gill. Now, you did attend the meeting on this a couple of weeks ago. Any time schedule? Have they released any of the uh, they were contracts? They get this out towards the end of February and get this project going this summer yet. Yeah, and it was a two-year project, so it won't be finished this year. Any readjusting of the creek? Um, I don't know how much of the creek has to be moved. I know that our 18-inch water line has to be moved twice uh, during mm -hmm. the project. They have to replace a number of them along there. I think there's five or six total on the job. And while they're doing that, if we supply the hydrants, they will put the new ones in while they're there working. So it's pretty good to get a 50, 60 year old hydrant replaced at no cost to the town other than the purchase of the fire. Okay. It would be nice if they were going all the way to, <coughs> to uh, Kruger Road and get it over and done with, but. At least it's better than nothing. Uh, anything further on the question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's approved. Uh, next motion, motion from Building Department and Town Attorney to grant Roselle Homes three model home permits for Parkside Estate Subdivision Phase 4 on the condition 
that no certificate of occupancy shall be issued until the road has been accepted for dedication and subject to payment of all required permit fees. So moved. Need a second. I, I just have a question now on, on the plowing, Paul. You had a concern about this. Can we ask them to plow this until we take the road, or what? You had a concern. Yeah, we don't plow. Until we accept the road, I shouldn't be on it. I'm not. Right. By this, you heard something back in there. We'll end up paying for it, even if we haven't accepted the road. And I'm not. I just get rich. I don't. I'm not sure if we've accepted water and sewer on there. So there'll be no water on back there. If they build a house and something burns down. Don't come crying to us because approvals haven't been met yet for the subdivision. Last I heard from GHD, uh, everything was complete. They were just waiting for uh, the developer to finish his easement. Easement paperwork. Yeah. Yeah, I, I believe uh, most of those infrastructure has been completed, <laughs> but we haven't accepted. So we're not going to maintain the water lines yet. We're not going to plow there yet if they need to get back there. These are model homes. No one's living there. It's their responsibility. And there's no certificate of occupancy until <clears throat> all of that's done, too. Yeah, they, they of cannot, course. They cannot uh, transfer, and no one can move in there until it's been dedicated. Water improvements have been accepted. Sewer. Correct. Okay, anything further on the question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's approved. Next motion is to authorize Wheatfield Lions Club to operate Fairmount Park Snack Bar for the 2016 season, subject to Niagara County Health Department rules. Um, and this, uh, I believe, has been approved uh, the last many years two past. E the last two years. Okay, I need a motion. I'll make a motion. <coughs> Let do the Lions Club operate the. Uh, okay. Do we have a second? I'll second. Oh. Second by Larry. Anything on the question? Yeah, just one. Uh, you need to have uh, Niagara County Health Department permits. Does right. that does that include it, or in, do we pick those up, or how is that working? They they would have to obtain that. Uh, it's their responsibility in order to open. All right, those are twenty five dollars a day. Hope they understand that. I think the town actually has a health permit, and it comes under that. But may we need to look into it for their own good? Don't trust them. me on that too much. The it has been run the past two years <coughs> by Debbie Carr. Anything further on the question? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? I'm going to abstain. I'm a Officer in the Lions Club. That's approved. Uh, okay. Next motion um, originally was from the Constable Department. I think uh, we are slightly amending it. It was regarding authorizing the Robbins Astro, the con Chief Constable, to sell the speed sign on Auctions International with the right to reject any offers. I believe we're modifying that tonight for Highway Department to um, as well with the surplus trucks. Okay, I think. I think first we have to declare the speed sign to be surplus, and then we can do the auctions international for everything. Or, or is it, okay, if it hasn't been declared surplus, yes, it would have to be. Okay, I'll move to declare the sign surplus. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> That's approved. Now we can have the, the, amended, the uh, amended sale of all the items. Of the... Uh, surplus trucks that were mentioned today from the highway department, surplus truck of the water department, and the uh, speed sign to be authorized to be placed on Auctions International for sale with the right to reject any offers. So moved. Okay. Second. Mo moved by Gill, second by Larry. Anything on the question? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That's approved. If you guys want to coordinate, who's going to do what? The last motion I have is, from the, again, from the Constable Department. Motion to hire Robert Kajewski in position of Constable, effective immediately. I'll move. Need a second? I'll second. Second by Randy. Anything on the question? 
All in favor of hiring Mr. Kajewski, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That's approved. And that uh, completes the uh, scheduled motions. Okay, we're probably going to have to go into an executive session. Uh, there may or may not be any business after the session. Probably won't be, but there might be. Um, but we'll go ahead and finish the meeting first and go into that later. Uh, board member items, Councilman Helwig, anything? Uh, I guess we're in a holding pattern here. You know, Mike was asking <clears throat> if we heard anything. I've not had any emails. I'm you know, looking at National Fuel Gas's site to see if they have something there. and. I don't see any response to our comments. I, typically, they'll send one out and tell all parties, don't they, Supervisor Cliff? Pat has been responding to me directly. Uh, National Fuel, per se, responds to questions through HERC, uh, and they'll do that on the HERC website. But Pat has been getting back to me. Anything you see on our website other than the, the HERC responses uh, were direct responses to me from Pat Kelly from National Fuel. So I'll send him a message in the morning and see if we can get answers. Um, and Mike, if you can help to remind me what the questions are, <laughs> it might be helpful. I'm sure there were a lot of them that came up during the meeting. I'll get together with Jennifer and get the, she can email them to you. Good. That would be good. Is there anything else the community can do? That's a good point because I have labels up here for their three uh, or two U.S. Senators and one Congressman. So I have probably about 20 labels and they're they're in I got three to a sheet so if people want to write their senators or congressmen because FERC is a federal agency uh, they're going to be making this decision in Washington DC so uh, your your two senators uh, Schumer and Gildebrand and your congressman Collins uh, although they don't have a voting power in this they, they do have some influence and they can and I, I think all three of them are going to you know speak up for us if we get enough residents to uh, send an email. Yep. And I'll, I'll pass these out later, put them on the table after the meeting. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Um, Councilman Gerbeck. Uh, this Thursday is the Comprehensive Planning Board meeting. Uh, that'll be held over at the, uh, the Senior Center. Uh, it starts at about 6.30, runs till about 8.30. Uh, you're all welcome to come and sit and listen and even partake if you'd like to join one of our focus groups, you're more than welcome. Uh, we'd be glad to have you. Uh, and the uh, second announcement is uh, with regard, and I'm hoping that you have some information regarding the veterans group as to what transpired at our last meeting. Could you help me out with it, Justin? Well, we are in Can you come to the microphone, please? Just any new developments, if there were any. Uh, I was still in the hospital, so I didn't attend. Right. Well, we are still in the process of uh, finding our our feet with regards to continuing fundraising efforts and uh, helping to get uh, certain paperwork through with regards to getting en um, the precise engineering and uh, concept studies through uh, with uh, the agencies involved. And uh, it's uh, all around pretty encouraging uh, going into it. Um, but uh, the more people, the merrier with regards to you know, participation and, and even awareness because this is a project that's going to be very transformative for uh, Fairmont Park. It's also going to be very transformative and very, uh, I think, a very moving tribute to uh, our veterans and our servicemen uh, from the past, uh, present, for the future as well. And, uh, but it really is an all in the funding, and the more we can get done sooner, uh, the better we'll be in the future. So that's really the crux of it, essentially. We really can't do too much else after that. We also have a um, um, fundraising promotion brochure uh, that is in the making, uh, and we also have a uh, possible um, trifold brochure version of that uh, for other presentations. So we got the big presentation um, brochures as well as the uh, smaller gathering one-on-one -on -one meetings with uh, perpetual, um, well, prospective donors. So that's what we're kind of doing right now. Okay, great. I thank you for filling in. No problem, sir. Everybody. Is that it, Art? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Randy, anything? Yeah, Agricultural Group is meeting tomorrow at 7 p.m. at the Community Center. Another thing, and I, Rich and Paul, are you? do you guys do the 811 training at 
dig safe stuff, you're going to go be there? Okay, I'll see you there for lunch. And uh, the stormwater training, do we do any, Do we send uh, Ron to that in April? We'll see Tim there. <laughs> and then the other thing, I know Mike's not here, but they had a senior dance, and we were many of us were there, and that was a nice uh, great evening dance. Saturday night. Mm-hmm. It was uh, quite a good turnout. And the other thing is I, a lot of times there's negative things, but I, I was talking to somebody in the town, from the town, who, and their daughter's in fourth grade, and Mike's not here, but I just want to say that they, uh, all I, uh, he said so much good about what we're doing and what he's doing over at the, uh, at the gym for the young girls on Tuesday nights. So it was just nice to hear that, uh, that the building is being utilized and everything is going well. So it was nice to hear good stuff. So that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Gil? I have some correspondence from St. Johnsburg Fire Hall. St. Johnsburg Fire Hall would like to add Stephen Sonnen uh, to their active membership role, and they'd like to remove Nick Tabano and Kelly Wellsleg from the active role and change John Gulagowski from active to non-active, and I'll make that motion. Okay, I need a second. Second. Second by Art. Anything on the question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's approved. Also, Adams Fire Company would like to uh, put Larry Hennenberger as a social member, and as active firemen, they'd like to add Stephen Josnick, Kevin Hodgkin, David A. Darren, Brandon M. Darren, and David P. Darren. Oh. Sort of sounds like to do sets and donners, huh? Rich at our oh. fire hall. <laughs> and I'll make that motion. Second. Moved and seconded. Anything on the question? Good for Adams. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That is also approved. I also spoke to Mike Rinaldi today. He called me at home. Uh, asked me if I had to men- mention about the Winter Festival. The town's going to be having a Winter <coughs> Festival this Saturday from noon to 4, right out back here behind the uh, town hall. Uh, there's going to be ice skating, snowman building, hay rides, chowder, food truck, a band, maple syrup, candy, and there's going to be a whole bunch of activities inside, too, for the kids in the uh, youth center. Uh, Kathy's a member of the committee. Is there anything I missed, Kathy, on it? No, I think you have everything covered. Hopefully we get a little bit of snow. So. Bounce oh, houses. Sorry. <laughs> there will be a bounce house indoor. Probably wouldn't work out too well outdoors. But oh, I think that will uh, be there. There's going to be a Humvee from the... Uh, from, from the Air Force? Ar- the no, Air it's Force. an Army, I guess. Yeah, Army. Army. Yeah. And he also asked me to thank Lauren from the Tribune for the beautiful article she put in last yep. Thursday about the Winter Festival. Uh, That's all I've got. The Aquarium of Niagara is also sending over their uh, their traveling zoo, I guess. <laughs> I don't know what else to call it, but that's going to be in there also. He, l- he read the list off to me today over the phone. It sounds like a lot of stuff. There's going to be a lot going on for, for something that was put together in a couple of months. It's going to be, it should be a really nice uh, afternoon. I have nothing at this point. Uh, Our next meeting is February 8th at 7.30 p.m. I do not believe at this point we have any uh, preliminaries, so it would be 7.30. I am going to ask for an executive session, but before we do that, we'll open back up for public input. Is there anybody that wishes to speak? Good evening. Good evening. Um, There has been a lot of new people attending the meetings, Mm -hmm. and I'm not sure they all know that this is a town meeting and not a zoning, and they may not sign up. Do you think it would be a good idea to just mention that in the beginning of the meeting and tell them they need to sign up if they want to speak before the meeting starts? It would be a good idea, probably. Yeah, Yeah. okay, that's one thing. And then another thing is if... um, the cul-de-sac issue that Paul mentioned. Why do we keep approving cul-de-sacs if they're not a good idea for our town? Uh, Cul-de-sacs have been discouraged. Uh, I think the terminology in the law is that they're discouraged by the town board unless there is no other answer. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it's been handled. There has not been a, I don't, has there, yeah, there has been a cul-de-sac. There's two cul-de-sacs on the little one on Nash Road across from Adams, is that called Aiden Estates? There are two cul-de-sacs that have been approved by this board in my six years, and those are the only two. Oh, that's not bad. 
Okay. Um, do you know how many focus groups you can belong to? Is it true you only can belong to one? Not to no. the best of my knowledge. Certainly anybody, anybody, whether you're a member or not, can come to any of our meetings. They're all open and public. Okay. You can belong to more than one focus group. And uh, there are people who are on multiple groups, so I would assume if you want to be on more than one, talk to Richard. He's the facilitator. He can let you know. He was the one that told me I couldn't. <laughs> well, he would no, be the one who would no, know. He, that's not true. Yeah, he but told I, me that the only other one I could be on is the veterans because I'm on egg. <laughs> And uh, I tried to... <coughs> you still can appear, and I'm sure you can participate in any, any of these meetings. Okay. And my last item is um, Mike Rinelli. He did a fantastic job on the booklet for the Recreation mm -hmm. Department. And I just felt kind of sad because it just said at the very bottom, um, this was put together by Mike. And he has done so much for the town. He didn't even have a little blurb in there. It was you guys and not him. And I just feel like he's, you know, not he, mentioned He does not enough. like to blow his own horn. And you're right, we should blow it more often. Yes. And, and Tracy as well. Tracy does a lot of work on that booklet as well. Yes, definitely. Okay, thank you. One last point. Is there anyone here that's new to our meeting that would like to stand up and speak? Just because you didn't sign in, we could... Okay. okay. So you're all set? Go ahead, Julie. Um, I would just um, like to um, underscore Randy's comment and Sharon's comment about Mike Rinaldi being under-recognized, if you will. He has done an amazing job with this, um, uh, the rec department in general. All of the things that he's brought are to this and the energy he has is great. I mean, I think that He's just done an amazing job. When I say I'm from Wheatfield, people say, oh, they have an amazing rec department. They've got great pro programs for the kids. Um, so that, I think, is one of the best things we have going in this town, one of the best. The second question I have is um, I have noticed some site work going on on Shawnee Road, right opposite of um, Fritz and um, Hill Road. And um, it looks like where the, the trucks are going out, or where the trucks are going in to deliver dirt or do whatever they're going to do, I assume they're prepping for a subdivision, um, is right in between. There's Fritz and there's Hill Road. And so if there's going to be a road approved, um, Supervisor, several meetings ago you commented what a um, boondoggle, that wasn't your word, my word, but what a hazard it is where Moyer and Loveland so I'm hoping that if that comes before the planning board for a subdivision, that where that road placement is, is taken into consideration. Because that will create another hazard on a road that's 55 miles an hour in terms of turning. It should be made to either line up with Fritz or Hill. I did talk to Mike about that uh, after it was brought up. I, I'll say at the last meeting, after it was brought up with me. And it is David Holmes' property, mm -hmm. and he is trying to recover some free soil that he's gotten somewhere else at this sure. point. There is nothing before the planning board on that site at this point. But when it does, I mean, I'm just saying, it's going to be a hazard to create, yeah. you know, turning this way and that way. It really needs to be lined up, as you've noted before, right. with the things not lining up. And um, so it I would just certainly be helpful. Be thought of. Yeah. No more hazards. Thanks. You have your hands full. All these. My name is Amanda Brewer. I'm with APD Engineering and Architecture. With me is Luke Kibling from Aldi Inc. We're proposing. We're. I'm working on the project for the Aldi pr proposed on Niagara Falls Boulevard, and per the town code, we're required to have 179 parking spaces. The planning board has said that we're allowed to bank the additional parking, the 84 spaces. Be and just construct 98 spaces. Aldi would like to go and see if the town board will approve a waiver so that Aldi is not responsible to, in the future, have to build the 84 spaces. They would like to have that property be an out parcel for future development. And if they are required to build that 84 spaces in the future, then that limits the 
ability of the property to work to have an out parcel. So all these asking the town board for a waiver to only be responsible to construct 98 spaces. Uh, I was at the meetings, the all these meetings, and if I recall, the planning board asked to hold on, hold that decision until there is a decision as to what's going to happen with the out parcel. There is a certain number that can be banked. They use the term banked. In other words, the space is available. It's designated as parking. It's just not built. And uh, that can be their decision at that point. The waiver becomes our decision. If we waive the need for parking, that becomes our decision. So unless I'm mistaken, it's not before us at this point. I, I think, but, um, and I spoke to Tim before with regard to this. I think, um, I, I mean, we haven't put it on the agenda yet, but I, I guess what we can accept this is a request perhaps in the future to add to the agenda. We did something similar with regard to the uh, town law allows the uh, town board to do a variation, not a variance, but a variation to the parking requirements. And it's not a variance, so it doesn't travel with the property, but it's specific to a certain project. circumstance or project. Um, so, and I think in discussing with Tim, um, probably for us to move forward, and we did something similar, I think, with the, the Dr. Hannon property, um, some sort of uh, analysis with regard to, um, and I don't know if one was provided to the planning board, as to um, why it's believed that that variation will not create a problem and, and that the 98 or spaces you're proposing would be sufficient. And I'm not sure, and me and Tim talked a little bit, whether it involves statistical analysis of other Aldi locations and, or, or ones of that similar size as to actually how much parking is utilized. Because from, I think, what the town rules initially say, the 190 or that's required, on the face of that, that probably seems, does seem excessive. But on the other hand, we're talking about a pretty significant reduction of 100 and, what, said 78 down to 98. So that's a pretty significant reduction. So. I think it's something that can be brought to the board, but I would assume for us to make that variation, we would need some statistical or data to indicate that the town requirements of 190 or whatever it is, is, is just way in excess and that we can pare it down. We, I have with me um, documentation from the store in Webster, New York, as well as the store in Penfield. And the, um, store in Webster from 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock on a Saturday, the maximum number of cars that they have are 65. Is that a store of similar square yes. footage? Yes, yes. And the Penfield one, the from 10 to 1 on a Saturday, the maximum is between 45 and 50 cars. Aldi typically wants 75 to 80 parking spots nationwide. That's typically what they use. They're able to sufficiently their customers are able to sufficiently go to their parking lot without any trouble and that's why we feel that the request for 98 is still above what Aldi typically uses but it's not as nearly as much as the town requires by the town code these two other locations that are out in Webster and Rochester area we have two we have one in North Tonawanda and one in Niagara Falls how is this all these going to be larger, smaller, equal size? If you can compare, do a comparison of those two that we already know. Um, the store in the store will be very similar. It's a little bit larger, then but which, then which one? The one. Both of them. Okay. This is it does have a larger footprint than the existing stores right now. However, with the larger footprint, they still use 75 to 80 spots is what they typically use, and that's sufficient enough it's how much larger the store Rough right idea. I'm not sure what the existing square footage for the store in um, then both of them yeah. yeah you understand our concern it was the same concern that the planning board brought up at the planning board meetings is that we don't know what that out parcel is going to be so how can we make a decision on a waiver until we know what it's going to be used for? If you're banking the spots, in other words, you have it on your layout as to where your additional parking would go if it is needed, that takes care of the store. 
and only if you ever open up a, a only if you choose to open an out parcel uh, later on would we have to consider the waiver that's sort of what I heard at the planning board meeting and it makes a lot of sense to me why why would we want to do a waiver now when we don't know what's going in there that could be an ice cream stand or it could be a doctor's office well just to clarify and that correct me if I'm wrong are, are you indicating whatever might be the out parcel when you come in with that plan that will have sufficient parking for its needs or um, you will need another waiver you, will, you won't know until you know what the use is correct we're assuming that um, when that out parcel goes before the planning board that they would have sufficient parking yeah. but we don't know at the moment because we, we, we don't know what it is we don't know either yet you're asking are you asking for a waiver just for the stores 98 spots correct we would like a waiver just that Aldi has to so that in the future they're not required to build out the other 82 spaces they would like to only have to build up the no, 98 if, spaces if nothing else is built there you don't have to build the extra spaces correct but they yeah. still got to build the 97 spots right we'll build so the 98 spots as shown on our plan and, and yeah. of course if this were to be granted just with regard to this this type of waiver and the out parcel perhaps needs a waiver too that there's no guarantee that would be granted in the future and that out parcel plan may not work correct they would have to come back before the board and get a waiver for that yeah if they needed it it's sort it's in a way it's a moot point until we uh, well maybe it's not a moot point because it might affect what the planning board does um, Tim did the planning board make a recommendation in favor to the town board for this variation I guess what I would suggest I mean this is the first that's been formally proposed um, and I know you have some data there um, perhaps some sort of written proposal that we can um, board review I would assume um, as to the statistics with regard to those other places and the typical needs of parking um, and of course this would be limited to this particular development something in the future may not work obviously but with that I mean there's no guarantees but that the board can weigh the variation and, and also be known that this variation although it's very similar to the term variance which is granted by the Zoning Board of Appeals which travels with the property forever a variation of this type is not necessarily permanent and if this uh, particular Aldi whatever in the future became some other type of business um, it might not necessarily transfer and um, either that business couldn't do what they want to do or they would have to go back and put in the proper amount of parking or get some other different type of waiver that's so correct mm -hmm. I'm inclined to want to ask for something a little more formal some kind of a request as to exactly what you're looking for along with a couple of pictures I've been to the meetings I don't know if the board members have been to the meetings or how aware they are of what's going on with this all these uh, project and then we can make a decision on the 8th okay our next meeting is the 8th Let's if you can get it uh, we would need it typically the week before okay. if you can make that if not we have another meeting two weeks after that I believe we might also be able to put that before the uh, planning board I think they meet the first week before the 8th probably around the fourth or third or fourth <clears throat> So okay. we, we might be able to get a, a recommendation to your specific request. Okay, thank you very much. Let thank me you. just ask this one more time. You're, you're willing to do the 98 spots for the Aldi, but as far as the future, we're going to bank all that. Is that what we're looking at? No, I, well, the, the future is not. The future is there's nothing guaranteed. There's, right, it's but not you're bank. willing for the 98, which is required by square footage for the first Aldi store. I think it's required more than that. Okay. No, no the it requires a lot more. Per the zoning code, the all these required 179 spaces. Yeah. We're proposing to build and construct when we construct the building 98 spaces. As you can see, the parking that you see down here, <coughs> all of this, these 98 spaces, we're proposing to construct that when we construct the all these building. It's the additional parking over here that gets 84 spaces that we would like a waiver for so all these doesn't have to build them at this point so they're right, right. Yeah, I think that's where the planning board is using the term banking the space can a waiver have contingencies uh, yeah I mean I think with the last one we did uh, a couple months ago we had some pretty significant contingencies that was a 
that was an even more in flux situation, I think, with a doctor or a dentist, right. and, and we had a lot because that practice could change very. This is a little bit more um, standard. However, uh, it is not a variance, as we say. It doesn't travel with the property forever. There would certainly can be conditions, um, and and if something in the future with regard to the new building, I mean, I don't know if the, the additional parking gets combined, but you know, we'd have to see how that goes. Just from my point, I have a I have a little bit of a trouble whether we have guidelines set forth. And if for some reason you were comparing other stores, I don't know what the store is going to have. Where are they going to park? On the street? On a state highway? And, and then we, if we come and say, yeah, that's fine, and a year from now we have a problem, what do we do then? That was sort of my next question, too. Can a waiver be revoked? If it doesn't, can there be a contingent in there that if it doesn't work out, the parking spaces, can you revoke the waiver? I, I think we did something similar, not not an outright revocation, but we put a lot of conditions that in the yeah. last one we did that effectively said if it's not working out, we can request changes. Here it appears, at least at this point, you will have space available if necessary. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you're just if your parking lot is full all the time, it may come to the point where like you realize we just need more parking, but then you have the space. It's my understanding to do that. Mm -hmm. Correct. At yep. this point, until you build point. something else. Okay. So you're going to get us something a little more formal as far as your specific request, and yes. we'll go from there. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you on the 8th. Good evening. Good evening. Um, thanks for the opportunity to ask this question. Um, you had mentioned that you have um, establish the I, fund. I just think we have the procedure uh, name and address. I think. Oh, Maria Tisby. I, I can't even. I can't hear her. Maria Tisby. I don't know if this is working. You Can you hear me now? Maria Tisby. Okay. Okay. Um, thanks for the opportunity to ask this question. You had mentioned that you've established a fund for vulnerable individuals, uh, five thousand and twenty-five thousand. And my question was. Um, who would establish what the priority is? Who would be the decision maker to decide we, who's going to get that? We don't. We well, I guess donate isn't the right word, but we participate with the NIACAP. Right, and I wasn't familiar with what NIACAP was. It's that was an organization that's uh, countywide, and it, it uh, gets donations from all of the towns, and they seek grants from other sources, and they serve people in need. So it's only Niagara County, or it would it be? Is not, it, is an, it is a Niagara County group. If you want to see the report, I can show you the report. You can read through it if you choose. Oh, that would be great. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt that. NIACAP, what it stands for is Niagara Community Action, Action Program, program Inc. Right. So okay. it is a Niagara yeah. County program. It's been around a long time. They've done this for many years. The, we had a, a house on River Road, for example, and the gentleman had no resources whatsoever, and his roof was caving in. And they came along and they paid to replace, I guess it was the roof of an entryway to his house, and they paid to have that entryway replaced. Uh, they will do people's roofs that need it. Um, so th so it's a, a, it's a community-wide organization that's cent centered in Niagara County. It's, it's a Niagara it's County based organization. based on funding from, where does the funding come from, just the, the town? The majority of their funding comes from grants through the state, but they also get grants from, there's about $33,000 they get from various different towns around the county. They also get money from the county. They also get money from other sources. There, there's probably 20 or 25 different places that they have for funding. So when you say county, you're speaking of Niagara County, not Erie County? Correct. Okay. So I guess the the question that I'm asking is, if you were in, unfortunate enough to be one of these vulnerable individuals, how would you know to access this, and who would you go to to say, gee, I need help, my roof's falling in? If somebody and were to come to me or to Kathy, we would get in touch with the young lady that uh, is our, the person that we deal with at NIACAP, and she would make a phone call back and shepherd you through the process. So the individual would have to come to the town board to access that? No, there's no, you can go out on the table out yeah, there. Okay. You can go directly to NIACAP if you want, but if you if you don't know how to get through it, we can get you through to the person that we deal with. Okay, uh, not, to, not to me. Uh, but So there's a report that I could look at? Would I have to FOIL that, or could I just ask for it, or how would I get that? I have that report in my office right now, I think. Oh, excuse me. Yes. Here it is. If you want to take a look at it, you're welcome to. Okay. Because I guess my question would be, if you were a vulnerable individual, how would you know 
to go to the town board and say, I'm going to ask Supervisor Cliff for some help. Plus, you might not have a vehicle um, yep. to be able to get here. And plus, um, if you made the decision or someone else made the decision, you might decide that a roof is important, but if another person was starving to death, someone has to make those decisions. They would make those decisions. They try to, because they get a lot of their money from other sources outside, they do try and spend at least, in, a, in the town of Wheatfield's case, at least with the $5,000 that we give them per year, they try and spend at least that amount here in Wheatfield. Okay. Are there any federal funds that are involved in this? Um, I don't think so. Not from what I, I did take a quick look at the report. I do not recall federal funds. I'm, I'm looking at their website online now for the Niagara Community Action Program. And it looks like they do a, a lot. Of, they work closely with uh, Niagara County Social Services, and a lot of people that have food stamps or have need for heat for heating assistance would would typically go through social services and. Sometimes they'll link them up with these agencies that can help whatever their specific need is. If they have a leaking roof or something like that, or they're, you know, they need heating so you, assistance, but if their heater is broken and won't run, maybe this agency will help them fix their heater. So would it have to be somebody that's already in the system on um, food stamps? I mean, what if there's someone that kind of just fell through the cracks, you know, had unemployment yeah. issues? We get calls in our office quite often with people asking for this type of information and help, and we can provide them to either the NICAP. So if somebody will call and say, I need some repairs done to my home, but I don't, I can't afford to do them, we will give them several different agencies. And we have a lot of information up mm -hmm. on the table up here, or we use the websites through all of Niagara County. We often refer people to Office of the Aging if they're seniors. So depending on what the needs of that individual are, we'll send them to different places. Okay, great. I, I'm, I'm applauding your efforts. I'm not being critical. I no, just I'm questions. just saying that there's a wide variety, so depending on the calls that come in, we may direct them to different places. Yeah, this is not the only service with whom we work. This is one Sorry? of the, This is not the only service that Kathy's aware of and knows how to get help for people. Right. I'm just looking at, you know, some of us are very fortunate. We have a vehicle. We have an education basis. Mm -hmm. We can look up our stuff on the Internet. If you're just a little poor person, and you either are compromised because you're, you know, a veteran, ill, or elderly person, or a child. How would you know to say, okay, I'm going to call Supervisor Cliff, and I'm going to contact, um, you know, you would not know. So, how is there like an emergency number that people can call here or something? The general number is is Kathy's office in the town hall, the okay. town clerk, and or you can call my office. Anybody in town is very willing to help out. Okay. Anybody can I just take a brief look at the report then? Sure can. And if I can just add, and I work uh, very often with Niagara County Department of Social Services, anyone that um, goes there for assistance, they're assigned a caseworker, and in their waiting area they have documentation, pamphlets from this organization, many others, and they as well, besides seeing if someone's eligible for heating assistance or public assistance or food stamps, if they will try to direct them to the necessary program. So really, the county organization for sort of first step people go to is Department of Social Services, and this is, if you're in Wheatfield, you're going to hopefully, and go to Department of Social Services or contact them for services, they're going to hopefully direct you, maybe perhaps as this one of your agencies that could help you. So what kind of documentation would this individual need to come? That's to something you'd, you'd have to talk to them. I mean, Department of Social Services has their own, but okay. they, would, they would let you know. I mean, they're, they're sort of the first... Um, they're the organization of last resort for people that need help. You go there. Because, you know, sometimes I think people cannot be last resort, but they're just falling through the cracks. They're not poor right. enough and they're not rich enough. Right. Um, and if they need help, my question was, would they be able to come to your board and say, look, I need help with this for an individual? They can come and ask, and we would put them in touch with agencies that, are, that we're aware of. And they'd have to reside in Wheatfield for you to assist them or refer them? I think any of us would help anybody Okay. in any Thank way you. we can. And yes, you may take a look at the report. Thank you so much. Anybody else, Brian? Anybody else uh, wish to speak? Yes, Joe. Regarding uh, Mike, 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 Some of us are getting old, <coughs> not mentioning any names. but. Nope. Regarding uh, sprinkler systems and the town highway right-of-way, are they allowed? 
probably I would like to think that they are not allowed within the right of way, but I don't actually know. That's something we would have to oh, check. Uh, th uh, theoretically, I guess they're not necessarily allowed, but um, just like that and many other things, landscaping, mailboxes, there's a tremendous amount of things in people's yards that are really in the right of way that they don't even realize a good section of people's driveways are in the right of way. So um, theoretically, things, certain things are not permitted, but realistically, people landscape up to their mailbox, up to their curb, even the grass. I mean, the grass theoretically there may not, may be in the towns right away. So uh, it's a little bit of a gray area. Well, I don't think town resources should be used for fixing them if they're not permitted. Good point. Or they should get a permit. They have to get a, I think they do get a permit to put them in, but I don't know if they're I don't know if they're uh told that they're not allowed to put it in. Um, Mike's not here. Okay. Thank you. Paul? Okay, Me. Kathy, go ahead. Just a reminder, the first due date for tax payments is coming up on February 1st, so anybody who pays their own property taxes, um, the due date is February 1st. Just a reminder. Thank you. Uh, before we adjourn, we are going to, I'm going to ask for an executive session. Is there anybody who wishes to make the motion to go into executive session? This would be for a matter of uh, personnel and contractual issues. So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second, I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, other than the town board, town clerk, who will be attending the executive session? Uh, town attorney. And that's probably it. I would think that would be it. Unless somebody wants somebody else. Okay. All in favor of going into executive session? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. We are in executive session. <laughs>